Hey, welcome back everyone, Well Known Tone here, and thanks for joining me in part two of this three-part series of Rob Pappin's latest plugin bundle, Explorer 3. In this installment, I'm going to jump into some of the more popular Rob Pappin products, starting off with Predator. Now, Predator is no slouch when it comes to its sounds and presets. There's literally hundreds of different things to choose from within the banks. You got everything from leads, pads, arps, chords, bass, and even some ambient presets as well. <laughs> Navigating through these banks is just as simple as it is in any other plugin within this suite. There's really a lot of great arpeggiated sounds in here. Probably one of my favorite features within this synth. Bank Manager gives you an intense preview of all the banks and presets. Here you can load, save, copy, paste, and even move different things around within here. On the surface in the darker areas up here, Predator has three oscillators that are pushed through a multi-mode filter and an array of modulation sources. These functions are augmented by an assortment of effects. The oscillators pack an amazing 128 waveforms, some based on the normal saw, square, and sine waves, but the majority of the waves draw an additive or spectral synthesis to produce a modern and additive world sound. Aside from its many waveforms, Predator offers a pulse width modulation with a dedicated LFO along with a sub-oscillator allowing you to control the symmetry of each individual wave. The main filter is a multi-mode affair that offers 6 dB, 12 dB, 18 dB, and 24 dB low and high pass filtering along with 12 dB and 24 dB band pass, notch, and comb filters. Q knobs and cutoffs are included as is a 5 stage envelope generator. Predator is also equipped with an arpeggiator that will only trigger when an arpeggiated preset is loaded within the bank. Next to that, you'll find the FX page with tons of effects and other functions that will allow you to tweak your FX to your likings. Now what you also get with Predator is Predator FX. This is a separate plugin that's included within the bundle and it shows up in your host effects list. It makes it so that you can use Predator, its filters, vocoder, effects, at an audio track. It has its own preset format and once you load it up you can find 128 dedicated presets. Everything from filter sweeps, vocoders, gators, phasers, flangers, and comb filters.
Next up we have Rob Pappin's Subboom Bass, another one that's been pretty popular for quite some time. With its urban style user interface, Subboom Bass is laid out in true Pappin fashion with an easy mode button that displays some very basic controls and a bank manager that makes it real easy to preview some of the presets and banks. Subboom Bass is a bass synth with two oscillators, each equipped with its own sub oscillator. The waveform knob allows you to browse through many different waveforms. The pulse width modulation knob controls the symmetry of the wave along with the speed knob. This also modulates the symmetry of the sub oscillator. You can also choose from any one of the sample waveforms and still use the sub oscillator. The filter button here will send oscillator 1 through a filter. With it clicked off, the oscillator 1 will not send through the filter. To the right of the oscillators you can find your filter where you can choose from many different filter types. And right next to that is your amp where you can control your volume and your ADSR. Down below if we click on the free mods button, a page will pop up with more modulation tools such as your envelope, LFO, and the matrix tab. The FX button over here brings up a page with more effects like your delay, chorus, phaser, reverb, compressor, distortion. Subboom bass also has a sequencer where you can control your steps as well as your velocity, choose the retrigger mode, swing, slide, latch, and key entry. In the play mode page, you can change the global pitch modulation or select how the synth engine runs by choosing monophonic, legato, sequenced, or polyphonic, as well as controlling the tuning. Okay, so now let's jump into the banks and check out some of these presets. Subboom Bass offers up some deep sub bass sounds for all genres, hip-hop, house, R&B, dubstep, and aside from that, you can find some bass percussions in here as well. Got some nice wobble basses in here. Some great sounds in here for if you want to do some cinematic scoring, films and TV shows. Subboom Bass is packed with a lot more great features. Clicking this question mark button will bring you up to a quick manual so you can see how all these features work in detail. The final plugin I'll be covering in this installment is Punch. Punch is a virtual drum synth split up into a few different sections. Let's start here in the silver area. In the upper left corner we have the easy page. Once clicked, a screen of faders will appear allowing you to control different parameters of your drums. If you right click and choose latch to MIDI, you can control some of these parameters using your MIDI controller. The next page is the pads page. This is where you control the drum sounds and control some of the modulations, as well as choose the type of drum sound you want. You can see here you have a few different models. You have your classic and then the punch drums which are from Pappin's personal library. The effects page allows you to pull up different effects and add them to your sounds. There's a real high quality reverb in here, as well as a really good filter. The mixer page is like the central control area. Here's where you control your volume and your pan in and effect sends. Next to the mixer is the modulation and effect selection page, where you have two envelopes and LFOs along with a modulation matrix. 
Punch, just like Predator and Sub Boom Base, also has a bank manager where you can quickly move around through the banks and its presets. In the lower left is where you can find the pads. The eight sample pads here use samples only. You can select the sample to add to the pads from the display area here. Okay, here we have the sequencer. The sequencer plays a groove once a key is triggered. If you start at key C1, Punch will play the individual drum sounds until key B2. If you hit note C3, that will trigger groove 1, D3 triggers groove 2, and so on. You can trigger multiple grooves at the same time or deselect a groove for added variation. Each groove holds four tracks. What's nice about the sequencer, it makes it better than playing a MIDI file is that you have better control over the timing. You just simply hit a note when you want and the groove is triggered. Also, you can pan each instrument per step or change the tune per step as well as the velocity. So if I'm playing a groove and I want to change the pan on this step and change the velocity on this one, then change the tune on the last one. I can go ahead and do that right here in the sequencer and that adds a whole ton of variation within my groove. To see how these features work in depth, there is a help page. Just simply click it and it brings up the manual. Well guys, that's all the time I have, so stay tuned for the third and final installment coming soon. Until the next time, this is Well Known Tone, signing off.